welcome. Welcome, everyone, to the Radio Tunes Podcast. How is it going? It's going great, man. Great I'm to be back. Oh, it's great to be yeah. I was going to introduce <laughs> myself. I'm, I'm Steve. I'm Ernie. Uh, yeah, and it is good to be back because we took a few weeks off. Um, you know, Ernie went on a little vacation, which is, you know, he's free to talk about it if he wants to, but, uh, you know, I, I've just been busy with a lot of shit. Uh, they're also, like, if you've noticed, there hasn't been gameplay and stuff, and, you know, we just, we have schedules somehow. <laughs> like, yeah, Steve, I, like, not to mention all the stuff uh, Steve's been doing for video game dunking. Uh, uh, yeah, we did, I did the one cartoon for him, and, uh, I don't know, now I feel like the need to be relevant, so I'm just... <laughs> I'm back caught, into cartoons. I am right? caught in this, this weird realm of, like, what do people even want to see from this channel, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to suggest something... They're all going to say cartoons. Everyone wants Everyone fucking, wants cartoons. Everyone wants cartoons. They just take a while, uh, which is, you know, whatever. Sure. Um, but uh, big news. Big, big news. news? Yeah, real big news. How big? Uh, Galaxy's Edge opened at uh, Disneyland? Yes, it did. Yeah, Star Wars Land or whatever the fuck Star it is. Star Wars Galaxy's and, Edge. And Ernie and I did not go. We didn't go. <laughs> you know why <laughs> we didn't go? Because they didn't invite us. No. You had to buy a ticket. Uh, well, no. Um, there was media day, mm-hmm. so there was a chance we could have gone if we would have like applied and been. No, in the no. Road. I heard like you could buy a pass. Yes. And you would get an appointment, but but basically you couldn't use your annual pass. You're paying on top of whatever like you're paying an extra fee. Just no, yes, the... that you're very correct. You yeah. had to like get a reservation for the first weekend. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you had three hours, I think it was. So it was pretty empty because it was only, like, reserva- uh, reserved guests. And it was all cordoned off. Like, you could only be in that section through reservation. Yeah, you know what's crazy, too? So Rocco Bodie from Mega64. Yeah. He's, like, my he's like my prime, uh, what do I say, my primary source for all this info right now. Because I've been watching their podcast, and he was talking a lot about it. And uh, he was actually saying, like, it was pretty fucking full, and it's not even, like, it's not even open to the public yet. Like, it's going to be ridiculous, dude. Like, Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be insane, honestly. Like, uh, I don't... I don't... Um, I don't think I will be visiting it anytime this year. I think if we do go to Disneyland, I think I'll just go to um, Disney's California Adventure. I think that's what I'll be doing. Because okay. I haven't even seen the uh, Pixar Pier. Ever, that was, like, the big hotness a couple months ago. So yeah, I haven't been to Disneyland, like, uh, like, properly, I guess, in, like, a long time. The other day, uh, I, I got in because somebody got me a ticket, and I went for, like, two hours at night. Oh, um, that's neat. Yeah, it was, it was okay, but we just went to go eat. It wasn't, like, anything... Uh, oh, did you do the Blue Bio? It's pretty tasty. Yeah, I, I don't know what the fuck it was called, but we went. We got a clam chowder bowl, the bread bowl mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. I don't know. It was, <laughs> it was good. Went to Disneyland, yeah. Disneyland. I got a protein right? style. You just pour it right in your mouth. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You know, when you get some bread bowls, you don't have to eat the bread. <laughs> you do. It's no, good. You don't. It's so good. I know it's um, good. You just don't have to eat it. But, yeah. So, um, I assume that once the park is actually open, mm-hmm. right, uh, you can just go to Galaxy's Edge with, the, with, the, with like, a Disney ticket, right? Yeah, yeah. It's going to okay. be a land. Like, you just, like, okay. Tomorrowland and stuff. Because I'm just thinking, like, like, first of all, I know Rocco spent, like, five six hundred dollars there mm-hmm. because so like the main thing is like you can go you can go build your own lightsaber right and like it costs like 200 bucks right because there was a section to do that in tomorrowland uh-huh but it was really cheapy yeah it was lightsaber like plastic shit. It was plastic this is this one the, is like the amped up version yeah this has got like the real crystals and all that no shit. it doesn't steve it well just... <laughs> according to him you can buy you buy the crystal and everything. You assemble it like whatever. no, no, yeah. But the crystals have like a little chip that tells the lightsaber what color to turn right, or whatever. Yeah. And he was like, "People are gonna hack this shit like the next day and have like every they're gonna have it like strobing rainbow colors like the next day or whatever." Which uh-huh. is funny because you can get it. The, the, they've had these kind of things forever. Uh huh. Like they're basically FX lightsabers, and there's tons of companies that do these. Yeah. Um, for less than two hundred dollars. But right. it's like now that Disney makes them, they're official. Well, and I, that's the you know that's what gets the Star Wars fans. He was saying the process hard. of it was really interesting, right? It's like Build a Bear. Yeah, but not ju- it really is, but not just that. Like, <laughs> apparently, there's like a whole ceremony that goes with it. Yeah, and you, the group of people that you're with, like you do stuff 
to like test it and there's like a moment where you all have to like turn it on at the same time or mm-hmm. something like that something it's very harry potter yeah he didn't want to spoil it that's how much he liked it he was like oh, i'm not gonna spoil anything but it's like it's really it's a really great thing and like kids are gonna fucking love it like they're just gonna like but it's like what if you're spending like 200 dollars on your kid like that's a lucky ass kid dude. <laughs> like, i feel like it's it's the uh it's the experience you're getting at uh, uh harry potter yeah, the wand, like you choose your wand, you do the things, it, it, and then there's a little bit of a play that goes on, and then was, you move in and get your everybody can get theirs. Yeah, I still want to do that, but it's, it's really fucking cool. And 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 what people were comparing it a lot to that one, mm-hmm. mostly because like so the the Galaxy's Edge planet or whatever mm-hmm. is like a made up planet, right? It's like this own thing that they made. Like I heard Cantina and I thought like oh like the Tatooine Cantina mm-hmm. right but it's not it's like its own fucking planet that they just made up for the land right um, and people were kind of like it's really cool don't get me wrong it's super awesome but like when you go to Harry Potter Land you're in like what is it Diagon- yeah you're in like Diagon Di- Alley or what is it yeah like you're there yeah. like a fucking movie set and you get to walk in the shops that they walked into and right. like. It's just different, you know? Like, it's not like it's not cool, because there's definitely, like, the Millennium Falcon, which is, like, the big... That's the big thing. Yeah. Steven has a lot to say about the Millennium Falcon. No, it was a... <laughs> the Millennium Falcon, first of all, looks awesome. But it was hilarious, because, like, I guess when they were, like, debuting it or whatever... Yeah, they had a live stream when they, like, the night before, they kind of unveiled it all. Uh-huh. Um, they So there's a big section in the middle of this land... Uh-huh. And it's um, it's essentially uh, the Millennium Falcon pretty much sits in the center of it, and you can like walk around it and stuff. Yeah, right. That's okay. what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've only so seen they were pictures. like, let's dedicate this thing to, you know, like to the park and blah blah. blah. So they unveiled it and everything, and then they had who 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 was there? Okay. Yeah, it was, it was like some announcer guy. I don't know who the fuck it was. Nobody cares about him. But they had like George Lucas. They had right. uh, Billy D. Williams, and they had uh, Harrison Ford. And they had Luke. Don't forget Luke. Did they have Luke? Luke was yeah, there. they did have Luke. Yeah. Well, anyway, they were they were trying to do this whole like, hey, let's send her off like the champagne bottle on the fucking ship thing, whatever, right? Yeah. Let's christen this bad boy. And they were like, oh, but we can't get it started. We're gonna need somebody to help us get it started. And they call so they call Harrison Ford up because everyone knows that he's rich and they're gonna give him a bunch of money. Um, and he's like. What he's supposed to do is he's supposed to tap it like the fawns. Yeah, hit it twice and go like... Yeah, yeah, and then, ooh, it starts up like magic because he's just Harrison Ford. He's got that magic to him. But he, I guess he didn't say his line or, like, he missed his cue. Mm-hmm. But he's about to go smack it. And Harrison Ford is old, you know? He gives less fucks every single day, right? He turns around and he goes, like, Peter, this one's for you. But it's like... it, it Peter Mayhew, obviously. But... <laughs> When he says Peter, the effects start up and like steam like, psh, like, like it, it started up. Yeah, yeah, it starts shooting out of the thing. And, and the, the music yeah, starts. Yeah, the music and... starts playing. So he's just like, this one's for you. Like he's screaming it because he has to do it over this music. <laughs> and he still taps it. But he still goes over and he hits it because he's like, I'm getting paid. I'm contractually yeah, obligated to I'm going to do what they it. paid me to do, right? But it's just, <laughs> it was funny because there was so many like, had so many like theories on this like, did he was he not supposed to say that? I think like, that was it. And like he just thought like you know what this is a good this is a good time to shout out my boy Peter Mayhew. Yeah, you know? I think like, that's exactly what happened. You know why? Why? Because it, it happens a lot more frequently now. Like remember when um, Harold Ramis died? Uh huh. And then Bill Murray was reading all these different like awards at the Academy Awards, and then he's like, and Harold Ramis for set design, blah blah blah. Like he shouted out his boy in the middle of it. Uh huh. So it's like. They are. They were already gonna have like an in memoriam for Harold Ramis, but he decided I'm gonna throw this little He's thing. Still, in. Yeah, I mean. Plus, there was a there was a Chewbacca in the driver's seat of the Falcon. Yeah. So there was already kind of a dedication to him. Yeah, and then and he was just like Peter, and he looked like he was pointing out there too, like into the crowd. Yeah. And then somebody's like, "Oh shit! I already started the sequence." Yeah, like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I, I just whatever. I, I I honestly think like when they saw him turn and go like look up at it, they're like, "Oh, that's the cue." Push the button, push start the sequence, tick, 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 you know, like everybody was already going. Sometimes like, we can't stop this. Sometimes I'm just like, just let Harrison Ford be. <laughs> like, just let him be. Like, I don't, <laughs> why you gotta bother him with this shit? He doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> seem like he likes Star Wars anymore. You he know? doesn't. Uh, uh, you know, it's really funny though, Steven, the, when Steven told me about this, like we had gone to like, we were driving to this mall. And Stephen was telling me about it, and he was laughing throughout the entire. I thought it was hilarious, yeah. Because the part that made him laugh even harder 
was at the end, after everything's happening, the music's going, there's fireworks and everything, and they fucked up. Somebody goes, oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> the, the announcer guy, he says, oh, well, and he, like, says it under his breath, but since he's mic'd up, you can you can clearly hear him just go, oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> like, oh, well, fuck it. I mean, you know, it's just Peter Mayhew. Who cares? It's you know? just Peter Mayhew's tribute, that's yeah. all. Uh, but that yeah. was fucking hilarious. It was funny. But uh, speaking of the Millennium Falcon, I just wanted to go over the ride real fast because I, I heard some cool oh, things. Oh, right. About it. Yeah. So uh, tell me if I'm wrong. Basic setup is four people in the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Like four two in the three. back, two in the front. I, yeah, I guess that's how it is. And they each have like this little video game type of game that they have to play. Um, and it's basically set up kind of like a Star Tours. Where it's like the thing will move and you have a screen in front of you, right? Well, the way Rocco described it, because Rocco had the engineering job or whatever, mm-hmm. and it was basically like somebody pilots a ship, and right. his friend Kevin was doing the ship thing. Mm-hmm. And if you the if the if you're piloting in it and you hit something, mm-hmm. then a button will light up on the engineer side like something fucked up and you got to stop it basically. Right. So it's basically just like. Like so what? somebody's actually piloting it? Yeah. Okay. And like, uh, it gets to a point where like, he was just like, oh, and then like the, the hyper, what is it called? The hyperdrive? Is that what Hyper, it's called? Yeah, the hyperdrive. Yeah. He was like, it started glowing and everyone had to be like, oh, you punch it, you gotta, you gotta get the hyperdrive now and whatnot. So it's like, it's not so much a ride as it is like an interactive like simulation kind yeah. of thing, like a video game. But can you mess up? Like some yeah. people told me like you yeah. can mess up the game. You can mess up. Like apparently, like yeah, I assume if you're piloting the thing. You can just like crash into shit and die or something. Well, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if that's the case. I don't, I don't know. know if they traumatize a kid who's like, it's Star Wars finally. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Um, You've killed everybody on board. <laughs> but apparently, like, uh, I was going to make a joke about like the kid having a lightsaber. Mm-hmm. But I just remember that they, they said that when you get your lightsaber, you have to leave it in the box. You can't even like have it out or something. No. And the same thing with the robes. Like, they'll fit you for a robe, and then, like, you put it on, and they're like, all right, you can't wear this in the fucking park. Because <laughs> like, um, there's a there a bunch of the play actors around. That's, and, that's and plus, what somebody said. Like, they do, Disney has a big thing about, like, you being confused with the cast member or something. Right. So That's why they, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but they don't allow a lot of cosplay in the park oh, for, really? like, grown adults. Like, they, kids are fine. Uh-huh. Like, if the kids want to dress up, because they're kids, nobody's going to confuse them for the staff. But, like, yeah. adults? Yeah. Like, I don't know if you noticed, they don't let a lot of adults dress up like characters. Yeah, I guess stuff. that's true. Yeah, I never noticed uh, that. But uh, what I was going to say is, like, what Disney, like, what Disney's doing with the Millennium Falcon is a lot like a ride they have in Epcot. Uh-huh. It's, it's like this Mission to Mars um, ride. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing. It's like there's four of you per thing. Right. Right. And each of you has a job. And it's basically this. It's basically one of you steers and the other three people, if you see a, a light light up, hit the light. That's essentially what it breaks down to. And cool. like, what's crazy with that one is that you're in one of those G4 simulators. Okay. And so like when you take off, mm-hmm. they essentially just spin you really fast. No, that's not And good. it sounds, it, yeah, it's really disoriented. <laughs> Because the camera's like going, like, you're taking off from Earth and you're going up into the... I'm sorry, it's Mission to the Moon, not Mission to Mars. You go up to the moon and it feels so effing real. That's like weird. When you're going up. So I feel like they're doing the same thing with Millennium Falcon where it's like, hit the button when it lights up. They're trying to make it as like, easy as possible Yeah. for like a kid be like, yeah. when it lights up. They did, it. Yeah, they, they did say like, oh, so that's like for the kids, right? The engineering thing yeah. and maybe like the pilot thing's a little more. And I think you have a gunner too or something. I think you have some. Uh, yeah. Sorry, my the details on this are very. It was like a. But cool... that's the only ride, right? It's the only ride. Yeah, it is. But it's like Harry Potter Land, where it's like they put all their money into Hogwarts or whatever. You mm-hmm. know, like they put all their money into Millennium Falcon, and it's <laughs> it's a one ride. But fuck, it's it's good. Like, like yeah, like a lot of people are saying it's like the best ride ever. You know, and I mean. Take that with a grain of salt because I know with these preview events, everyone like tells, everybody says that. everyone overhypes shit. Um, like I heard like um, the blue milk or whatever. Mm-hmm. Everybody's drinking. The blue you milk. can get the blue milk. Rocco personally was like, it tastes like shit. It tastes I like blue milk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like we have, we had a. We, I was kind of jealous because two of the two of the people from my work got to go because uh-huh. they did do segments for the thing. Oh, that's cool. So we got to try like all the food there, and he's like, it's pretty good. And I was like, if you eat there, is it like blue bayou? He's like, no, it's not Blue Bayou, but it's it's really it's good food for Disneyland. You know what oh, I mean? Cool. Like, so I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. He's like, tried the blue milk, and he's like, it's just 
it's just blue milk. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's just blue shit. It's just milk. Okay. You know, but everybody's losing their minds. Um, the only other thing was like, they are selling like some really high end Star Wars stuff there. Like they have droid, like full, full on droids that are programmable and you can like drive them around. Yeah, they have, everything. they have build a droid too. Yeah. As, and it's like $600. Yeah. But like the build a droid is the same thing where it's like, Oh, you can't use it in the park. No. Which is dumb, too, because I was hearing, like, uh, they were like, oh, maybe the droid, when it gets to this section of Star Wars land, it'll act a little different. Like, it'll malfunction. Or, no, they you, know. Can't, you can't have but it. But it's, like it's like, you can't like have they it just, out, so. Like, I don't know if you know this, but they also put restrictions on, before Galaxy started, Yeah. like, a month before, they were like, all right, enough with these fucking, uh... These fucking, uh, what are they called? Carriages? No, they're not called carriages. Strollers? Strollers. Uh-huh. Enough with the fucking strollers. No three person wide strollers no more. Wow. One stroller per family, and it's gotta fit within this little box, and they put like tape on the floor. Oh, really? With like a thing that says, cannot be bigger than this. That's crazy. Because they are fucking done with strollers. That's that's insane. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's become a real problem, and now that they're gonna have like so much more crowding because of Galaxy's Edge, yeah. they just can't deal with it anymore. That's crazy. It, it, don't you remember, like, if you went towards. I think it was Small I'm, World. I'm not super familiar with Disney. No, no, but like it, you know where a Small World is, right? And there's like right. a little store in front of Small World where they sell merch. Yeah, it's like essentially a you you couldn't walk through that area anymore to get to Small World. Like they made a separate path that goes along the right because all of that was covered in, in strollers. Jesus, like, it Christ. just said stroller parking with a bunch of lines. It's like when the fireworks go off and they block off like half the park or yes, something. Like, but again, it's like these people are walking around with strollers that are like fucking three kids wide and just pushing them through and it's like what are we supposed to fucking do like <laughs> and then they park that thing so they were well, just like no more that shit no more droids no more robes and no more lightsabers no more families actually just just that lightsaber in particular you uh-huh. can keep but the other star, the other lightsabers the plasticky ones mm-hmm. those you can have out okay because they use them at the the other it, it, it's, 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 it's funny that, it's funny though too because it's like what were we saying when like Last Jedi came out we are just like all these people that are like fuck Star Wars they're gonna they're not yeah right like <laughs> you guys are gonna be here next year for the next fucking movie and like this is just the, this is just the epitome of that like with this announcement I'm hearing all these people talk about how great Star Wars is again I'm like it's just, it's well, just why do you even doubt it you're gonna like Star Wars <laughs> that's why when people are like oh man people fucking hated Last Jedi I was like did they did they really hate it? Last I mean, I'm Jedi? sure I they, don't think they did. I'm sure they did, but what I'm saying is like when really? they were when they were just like when they were just saying like, "Oh, I'm done with Star Wars forever." It's like that's just a blatant lie. Like, why are you saying that? You know. Yeah. I mean, and then, and then they remember they showed the um, the thing where it was like uh, the rollout for movies and Star Wars for the next like six years or something. Yeah, I think a lot of them got canceled or something, didn't they? Well, I don't know. They just didn't have like titles yet. Yeah, I don't want to talk out of my ass. I don't know what I'm. But it said like in 2022, I believe, uh, I might be a year off, they said that's when the next Star Wars film. So yeah. the one at the end of this year, mm-hmm. and then in two years. Yeah, they're one. supposedly going to quote unquote take a break, which is like... Which is dumb because they're not taking a break. Yeah. Because as soon as Disney Plus comes out, you got the Mandalorian coming out. Yeah, it's so going to be a thing. series of things. And like... then there's going to, the cartoon is going to finish up, and then after that, I think they got another thing in the works. Mm-hmm. Like, there's they're not going to stop giving us Star Wars. I hate when people are like... No more Star Wars for two years. It's like, fuck you. Just, fuck I, Like, I won't lie to you. It sounds cool to have, like, a lightsaber you built yourself. Mm-hmm. I've just gotten to the point where I'm just like, what am I going to do with this shit, you know? Like, you can especially play with it when your son goes to sleep. No, in the no, no. See, especially because it's like, you go to Disneyland, right? Yeah. There was one time when I was, like, 13 where I was like, you know what? I want a Goofy hat, and I have money. I'm going to buy a Goofy hat, because I love Goofy, right? Mm-hmm. And you wear the hat in the park... What the fuck do you do with it once you get home? You don't wear it. You can't, right? So it's like, I buy a lightsaber. You can't even use it in the park. It's going to go home. It's like, it's like, no offense, but like, I'm sure everyone's Harry Potter wand is just sitting in the box too, right? Like, it's like, I don't know, whatever. I'm sure if you But they encourage you to use it at the park. Yeah, that's true. So it's like, they want... At Universal Studios, they want you in the robes. Uh-huh. They want you using yeah, yeah. the lo- wands. Exactly. They they even amped up the wands. They're like, if you if you buy this upgraded wand, now you can interact with shit in the <laughs> windows. 
So it's like they want it more. And, <laughs> it's an upgraded one. And yeah, it's an upgraded one. <laughs> so like the one. Okay, so when I went, which was at this point, I think ten, almost ten it's years got ago, like Wii Motion Plus on it. It does. <laughs> This is old news, everybody, so I'm not telling you, but, like, when I first went to Harry Potter World in Orlando, before it opened here, uh-huh. the wands were just, uh, like, a, it was just a wand. It was just a stick, essentially. Mm-hmm. Didn't do anything. It had your name on it. Like, you could get your month, or you could get a, like, real Harry Potter person's one, like Hermione's or Voldemort's or whatever. Uh-huh. But when it opened here, they were like, we're going to amp it up. They're going to have little RF um, tips to them. Uh-huh. That uh, that will like if you stand in a certain spot and you hold the wand for it and you do a motion, uh-huh. there's a can- infrared oh, camera okay. in the window that will read the motion, and then it something will happen. Oh, okay, so you'll be like Leviosa. Exactly, yeah, and okay. then a little feather floats. Oh, like no cool. joke, it happens. <laughs> so there's like I think there's like six spots, and I think they're gonna upgrade the wands again. Honestly, <laughs> I just love the idea that it's like it's like. You buy a wand and you're like, oh, that wand it chose you. That wand, <laughs> that wand chose you. It does. You. It, they then, do that. <laughs> no, but they're just like, we also have this upgraded wand. It's like, well, but that one didn't choose me. And it's like, ah, it'll be fine. <laughs> this no, fine. now when they do the upgraded wand thing, now they like. It has to choose they, you? They, no, they, they do the choose you thing, right? But oh. they do the upgraded one. They don't just do the regular one. They don't okay. even sell the regular one anymore. Oh, okay, it's, okay. I, cool. I believe it's only the RF ones. All right. Like, see, that's the other thing, too. It's like, since the wands are fairly cheap, right? They're like forty bucks or what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. like forty bucks. Yeah, like uh, that might be something I actually spend money on, even though it's like. Well, look, look. It's much smaller than a lightsaber. <laughs> yes, and and honestly, like they make it so it's very easy to have with you, like a lightsaber that doesn't like. I assume. Uh-huh. I haven't seen the lightsabers, but I assume they're not the ones that are retractable. No, it's like it, an FX like, one. It's like an FX one, right? Yeah. You have so imagine one. carrying that shit around all day. That's all the, right. That's the one thing that's always yeah. Okay, keep going, keep going. But like the Harry Potter wand and robe. Yeah. There's a pocket for the, the yeah. wand, so you Why put the thing in there yeah. and you wear it. Like they they've kind of thought the whole thing through. Like, so I think I think the next step uh-huh. because they do, they now are going to be doing this thing called the dark arts. Um, light show that happens at Universal mm-hmm. and I think what they're going to do is they're, right when it comes out they're going to introduce a new wand mm-hmm. that interacts with it so it's like in the in the movie like sometimes they can make the tip glow like white for, yeah. for light Lumos yeah. exactly oh Steven <laughs> what did you just say Steve? what did what? you just say I know, the, <laughs> I know some of the spells I don't know all of them <laughs> Well, I was gonna say like they'll probably make it so that like you all say something and it lights up and like yeah. that's the next logical step is to have it light up mm-hmm. and and interact just like with you know Disney. I've heard I've never been to this like festival of colors thing that they have in uh, yeah in California Metric, but apparently if you have a certain type of hat, your hat will react to the lights. <laughs> oh, what are you? Serious? Yeah, I think I, yeah yeah. <laughs> um, mm. So you know. I mean that that would be like the next logical step. I That's think. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we should move on from this Harry Potter talk because uh, I'm sure well, people Steve. who don't I'm sure people who don't give a shit about it are, are upset. Big. Um, well, speaking of big events, E mm-hmm. three's coming up. It is coming up. Uh, like next week, it's coming up. Yeah, I know it'd be cool if we could go, but I don't think we will. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like me and Ernie were talking about it, and it's like. There's not really anything we want mm-hmm. there. No. So, like, it's it's this weird kind of E3 year where it's, like, they might announce consoles, they might announce other stuff, but it's mm-hmm. not, like, something where, like... I, like, I think the only thing I really care about is Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah. And I don't think they're going to have a play... If they have a playable demo there, then, yeah, that's cool. I'm jealous. Yeah. But um, it's not even a big deal, though, because, like, I played it. Like, yeah, like no, no, I, I, I played it. Final Fantasy VII. Like, there's not, they're not gonna surprise me with anything, you know. And like, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, we were looking at some of the rumors, right? Um, some of them were pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, but none of them are like, like two were surrounding games, which is Halo and uh, Gears of War. Yeah, well, Xbox is supposed to do new console. Right. Same thing with PS Five. That's a big right. rumor. I heard some rumors about Banjo Kazooie, and that's 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 the extent of the rumors. Just Banjo Kazooie. There's nothing like like I don't know anything about like is he, he just walks up to the podium. Yeah, Banjo Kazooie. I mean, you know, that was, 
<laughs> there was just one year where they they just said Crash Bandicoot and they, they just was, walked off. Yeah, that like, was it. Like uh, Crash Team Racing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, I, I think for me, Final Fantasy VII remake is like the the, the big one because they have to have a new trailer. Mm-hmm. They just kind of like dropped one out of nowhere a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and uh, everybody was asking like, "Where's Tifa? Mm-hmm. You know, where's Sid? Where's all the other characters that they didn't show?" So uh, like if. If they actually announce a release date for like chapter one or whatever, because they're going to be doing it in chunks. You think so? Yeah. Oh, this, okay. If you don't know, the the game was being developed by somebody else. They looked at it and they said it's not good enough. So Square Enix themselves is doing it now. But they're doing it from the ground up. Do you remember the company? No, I don't remember. Okay. Well, yeah. if, they're, if they are taking a look at it now, then yeah, that probably is going to be a chunky release date. But I yeah. hate that. I, I mean, honestly hate when they do that because remember what happened with Half Life One? Yeah. Or sorry, Episode One and Two. That was it. We never got Half Life Episode Three. I don't even know what to call it. I mean, I think, I think honestly, there's a huge demand for this. Of uh, course, there is. I think they will finish it. Like how long it's gonna take? Yeah, that does scare me. Mm-hmm. I do feel like we're gonna be playing this game for the next eight years. Like. But honestly, 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 it just makes me want to wait until they release the whole thing. No, no, no. Just... I was telling my friend this too. I was like, let's say they release like chapter one, and it's like, it's like a, it's like a good like twenty hours. Mm-hmm. I think I'm good with that, you know, because like maybe I don't want to spend a hundred fucking hours in an RPG right now, you know. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's better for them to like segment it this way, so I savor it for like the next eight years anyway. This is me putting a positive spin on what's gonna be fucking like. You're really you know, reaching I, I really, next to you. I don't know. Really I'm just, I'm just saying. You know, like whatever. Um, there was an Avengers game mm-hmm. that everyone's been looking forward to. Square Enix is also making an Avengers game. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody knows what the fuck it's gonna look like right now. But well, it's... I mean, I, I told you this because there's not much information on it. They're just like, oh, they're working on one. And I'm like, great, but why is it, why is it, like news, right? Mm-hmm. And um, Stephen and I watched this other uh, YouTube channel called like Unseen sixty four. Yeah. And uh, right when like the first Avengers came out, there was there was somebody was working on like, I forget which company was working on the game, but it was like this first person Avengers game. Yeah, those there's there's been scrapped Avengers games before. And yeah, like... and it was but the thing it was like it was finished and the concept was really fun. It was like. It was very much like now looking back at it, like I I, I, uh, I recently watched it. It looked very much like an Overwatch kind, kind of, of thing. Yeah, but, but you the, could like, like mix powers and stuff. Yeah, that was that was kind of the crux is that like you could mix your powers to take down like big bad guys. Mm-hmm. And so it, it was very much set on teamwork, just like kind of Overwatch is kind of surrounded by that as well. Yeah. But in this one, like working together would combine your powers and give you like a boost. Uh, also, Ken Levine is apparently gonna. This is a rumor too, so I don't fucking know. But Ken Levine, huh? Yeah. So... When's the last time we heard of that guy? Bioshock Infinite. He's a, he's the Bioshock <laughs> guy, because he he had gone to like form a new company or something. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, and we haven't heard from him in a while, so. And just to give you perspective, mm-hmm. right? I think Bioshock Infinite, not Bioshock Original. Uh-huh. I think Bioshock Infinite is almost ten years old. Probably, yeah. You know, I, I want to say... No, 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 And no. that was the last game he ever did. Bioshock Infinite came out like 2013, 2014. So not so much, but it was a while ago. Um, and people were talking about Bioshock 4 as well. So those are like... Whatever, what do you want to do with the grain of salt, whatever the fuck people say. Mm-hmm. Rumors. Right. Right. I, I still don't like whatever. You see the announcements, you see the announcements. I don't need to be there. But let know, me ask like, you this. Uh-huh. Ken Levine, because I also heard a Bioshock new game is coming out, mm-hmm. but they're not saying that he's tied to that at all. No, no, no. Yeah, Bioshock exactly. is coming out on its own, and then he has a new game. I don't game think as well. he works there anymore. Yeah. So. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know the details. Um, but Ken Levine's had a good track record. So I like Bioshock it. One. Uh, I never played System Shock, but you know whatever. Was he in that game, or was it just inspired System by that game? Shock? Was his game, I think. System Shock yeah. 2? Yeah, 2 was his game. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I, my friend was playing it the other day, actually, uh, Bioshock 1. Mm-hmm. And he was telling me how he can just run through that game over and over again. And I was like, yeah, like, I know Bioshock Infinite, like, 
some people had problems with the story because it was kind of whack, mm-hmm. which I, I completely understand. But I you, love running through that game. But you got to give it credit for, like, you're, you're first person the whole time. There's no cutscenes in that game. But, you're like, they can they can fluidly tell a story to you without taking control away from you, you know? Right. Like, especially Bioshock 1 with, like, with the audio logs, what are they called? Voxophones or whatever? Voxophones, yeah. Yeah. It was a brilliant way to tell a story while you're playing. Like, you're listening to these audio logs, like, while you're picking stuff up. And, like, it's just great. Like, the world building in Bioshock is, like, really fucking good. I don't know. Yeah, that's why I could still play part one. And you know what's great is par- playing part one HD with, like, new graphics. Uh-huh. It's almost like a whole new fucking game. Yeah, it's nice. Especially because, like, uh, the PC version, like, if you had Bioshock, apparently, you just got the new one for free. Yep. It was like an, it was just like an upgrade. Because when they released the HD remix for, like, the newer systems, like Xbox One and everything, uh-huh. um, you just automatically, if you had all three, you just automatically got an HD upgrade. Which was new, which essentially was just like the uh, HD textures and stuff for your computer. That's cool. Which is really great. Um, we did play a game. We yeah. Haven't, we haven't played much. Steven turned me on to this game because he yeah. was like, dude, you'll love it. Yeah, actually, um, I saw it on Donkey's podcast, and I think he got it before everybody. Because mm-hmm. I think he knows the guy. From what I understand, he know he knows the guy that made the game or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was, he has gameplay on like while his podcast is playing, right? And he had this fucking game that looked like just crazy. You were like this, you're like this pixelated samurai guy, and you're going around killing people and slicing their guts out. And it's uh, it's kind of, I, I haven't played Hotline Miami, but a lot of people are comparing it to that game, right? Because it's also Devolver, uh, digital. yeah, it's digital Devolver. It's it's uh, the reason they say it's similar is because it's a lot of do everything fast. If you die, it doesn't matter. You just come right back. Yeah, I guess so. And this game is kind of built in the same way. Uh, what this one has, though, is like uh, you kill everybody in the room, first of all. Mm-hmm. But like your character is infected with this this drug that's called Kronos. Mm-hmm. And apparently it lets them see the future and lets them plan it out. So you're essentially not dying. You're just seeing what happens until you fucking finally die or whatever. And then you, you get do to, that. You get to play it out perfectly every time, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's really cool. The the art style is like pixelated graphics. I know some people are tired of that, but the it, the art's really good. It looks like really it's great. some of the it's some of the best pixel art I've seen. Um, the animations are really fluid, and the gameplay is like super fun. The gameplay, like to me, is like really addictive. Like that was the thing that really caught my attention was like it's just one of these games that looks fun and like you can look badass while you're playing it. Like right. that's what a game has to be for me to like it. You have to. If I can look badass playing a video game, then I'm in. Like that's why I love Devil May Cry Five. It's like if you can look badass, then that's that's I'm gonna play your game. That's it. That's all there is to it. The the great part about this is it's they built it in a way that it it feeds to those people who are old school, like difficult old school difficulty is like my is like a thing uh-huh. that people are drawn to. This feeds into that because essentially it's it's a room to room game right so this is the room that you're in currently once you kill everybody because you have to kill everybody yeah then you get to move on so essentially once you play through this like once you play through it once like you exit the stage and it goes like yes that will work and then it plays again like yeah. off a of security <laughs> tape yeah and then you see like what you just did again which is really great because i mean i've turned it off at this point <laughs> or like i skipped through it but it's it's like to feed into what steven was saying you get to see yourself look all badass. Yeah, I, I, there, there was some of them that like took me a while to get, mm-hmm. or some of them that I was just like stubborn and I was like, I want to do it this way. Like I want to throw the smoke grenade and then I want to be in the smoke while I'm doing this and all this. Um, and watching it back like all clean was just really satisfying. You know, it's like when I don't know, like when you're watching somebody play a game on YouTube like perfect. Like, yeah. Just, just like knowing that it's gonna be perfect as you're watching is just like I don't know. It's cool. See, and like some games I hated. Mm-hmm. Because they had this little checkpoint system that I really pissed me off. Mm-hmm. It's like, essentially all you're doing is getting to the next checkpoint, get to the next checkpoint. Yeah. This has a similar style in that every room is essentially a checkpoint. Because uh-huh. once you die, you just go back to the beginning of that room. Right. But this doesn't feel like I'm just getting to checkpoints. Because uh-huh. I just look dope. It's like, this is a new set of rooms that I could just mess people up in in the best way possible. And then I just get to move on. That's not really a checkpoint game. It's just me looking dope. Yeah, and they're like... Um... 
You also have a slowdown mechanic. Yeah. Where you can slow down time. Um, and when you throw your blade out, if you time it right, you can actually reflect bullets. Mm-hmm. Which is so awesome. And it's really cool when you actually, like, work that into, like, your sequence of moves already. It's just, like... It just makes you look so badass, dude. Like, that's... <laughs> and every level you can approach however you want. Like, some are a little more straightforward than others. Like, uh-huh. the beginning levels. But some of the other ones are very, like... There's four floors and you can just do whatever you want. Or, like... There's little tiny Easter eggs in every single one. Like, in one of them... It's... it's um, one of the levels, there's, like... It's a theme park. Or it's some sort of, like, studio. Uh-huh. And then it's, like, quiet, quiet hill. As oh yeah, to Silent I, remember, yeah. I was like, oh, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> dude, the the art style in general, like I know I already was talking about it, but like, it's like this really unique, like, it's like a cyberpunky neo Tokyo kind of like vibe that I get from it. Yeah, but it's just it it's it's cool because like it's got like these, I don't know how to describe it. It's got like this nice blend of like old fashioned samurai stuff. Yeah. But the guy busts out like a little iPod and he puts his headphones on before every fight. Like it's just so like, and the the track like it tells you what the track is at the bottom of the yeah. screen. Like I'm just like, oh, it's so cool. It's just like this cool like modern like spin on like a traditional samurai. Like yeah, people were calling it what was it like samurai noir? Yeah, I think that's a fitting like I don't necessarily think it is, but it's a fitting title because as soon as you hear that, you kind of you hear that and you picture exactly what this game is yeah so maybe it's very appropriate in terms of the style um what's really cool too is like this game has a lot like it's pretty short honestly it's like four hours or something four or five with everything unlocked yeah uh it's only 15 dollars um but what's cool it's on is that, sale right now oh is it it's uh like down to 10 or 11 dollars oh that's dude go get it for sure um but what i was gonna say is like this is one of those games where, like, the choices actually matter. Mm-hmm. You can actually do things differently. And Ernie was just telling me that there's, like, a way to unlock a whole other fight. I don't know if we want to spoil anything. But I'll just say that, like, for instance, for example, there's a guy in the second level that just jumps off the building. And mm-hmm. he kills himself before you get to him. But you were supposed to kill him. If you rewind time and you have something that you could throw at him... Or I suppose maybe you can get there fast enough or something. No, you have to kill him. You have to throw him, right? You have to throw something at him. You can kill him by throwing something at him, and it just says like "good job, complete." Like (laughs) you don't have to listen to him. Yeah, it's so it's so great because it's like, do you guys know how satisfying it is to like have like this idea of something and then have it actually work in the video game? You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It's just so satisfying for me to be like, hey, I think I can kill him before you know like circumvent yeah was supposed to have it because okay so this like part of the game's charm i guess you could say is the what steve was talking about earlier these guys are on chronos which lets them see the future a bit Uh and then affect what happens so a lot of this game is about looking into the future Mm -hmm. and having that information and then replaying it yeah exactly so i actually have run through the game like four times Mm -hmm. because not only am i trying to get alternate um, outcomes mm-hmm. because the dialogue boxes, the choices that you have, yeah, are only revealed after this little bar like fills up. So right. it's like you can be a straight up asshole and just keep smashing A, and he'll be really aggressive. It'll just choose like the first answer, yeah. which is like the most aggressive answer. But if you wait for that little amount of time, then three other options open up. Yeah. So like it, depending on how you want to play, you can actually affect and unlock not only like different options but you'll have different outcomes of every single thing and i've, I've heard uh, secret bosses yeah so i mean it's 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 a game that begs you to replay it, it yeah so it much what i really like about the whole chronos thing too is like there's a lot of games like super meat boy and stuff where you just respawn instantly and whatnot right mm-hmm. but this game actually like has like a it, it made it into a story element mm-hmm. like it's not just a gameplay like type of mechanic that's like a visual aid or anything it's like literally like it's literally what the whole game is about yeah it's like it's like the the basis of the whole story which is like oh that's that's interesting and it's also like i mean the story's kind of dark um very yeah but it's i don't know i finished it and like the ending i was just like that was cool that was that was a great fucking experience like yeah <laughs> uh I, I don't know like I, I i think some people might say it's a little too short but I don't know. Well, it's again, it's like a ten fifteen dollar game. I thought it was. I thought 
the length of the game was good because I was able to finish it in like two sittings. Yeah. Like I was, I was, I was like, I was, I was literally, I was literally working on the donkey cartoon, and like I would take like an hour break and I would just sit there and I would play and then I'd be like, all right, I'm back into it and I would draw some more, and then I would take another break and it's like I finished it like just doing that. It's like so, it's so nice to just pick, be able to pick it up and play it. I, I made the mistake of like so the next on Saturday mm-hmm. I was supposed to do some chores in the morning. Yeah. One of which was like taking my car in for service. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'll buy this game that Steven said to play, <laughs> and I'll download it tonight, and then I'll have it to play because I'll probably have to wait like an hour or two. Uh-huh. I could probably like I could probably get a good amount in. So I was like, you know what? I'll start it right now. I'll just <laughs> do the intro level so I can get the feel of it. Blah blah. blah. And then, and then it was one in the morning, and I was like. Oh shit! I finished it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really addicting game, man. I started it like at no joke, like ten o'clock. There's right? just when everybody else went to bed. And there's was... just so much about the game that's really satisfying, like the movement and like I don't know. It, it's it's hard to describe without just like showing you gameplay or something. No, you know? I, it's 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 really good. Like, and I think the um, I think the name is pretty appropriate. It's called Katana Zero because it's really easily. Like, Katana and Zero, the name of the main character, I think, is Zero. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. If you look at his profile, I believe it's, like, Zero. Like, they eventually show you his profile, and it's Zero. And then he's, like, he works with a... Nobody else works with a uh, samurai sword, but, like, there you go. Yeah. So it's a cat Katana. But it's it's great, man. I highly recommend it. And Um, there's tons of Easter eggs. There is. It's one of of those indie games where, like, they, um, they, they... share the spotlight with their indie game brethren right there's like references to shovel knight and like uh, silent hill and well the swords you get are like references to their games too you yeah. can get like different swords or something um so that's cool i, I like games that do that um and then you'll notice that, like I, I there's a couple of youtubers at the end of the credits who paid a lot of money to help this thing out and one of them was like i dubs was yeah i saw i dubs at yeah. the end and i was like where's donkey's name what did he do huh no, he, maybe they have his real name. Maybe they don't have him as video game donkey. What if they have him as like his real name? Maybe I, I didn't. I was looking for it. I was because I was like, I was like, hey man, Ducky recommended it. So where's his name? Like, it's gotta well, be. I trip. saw I Dubs on there. I don't know what he did. I assume he gave a lot of money, but I don't know. Because yeah. well, I uh, like I watch his channel pretty frequently. Didn't mm-hmm. say anything about this game. That's weird. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know anything about the involvement of these. Uh, big prolific, time YouTubers. prolific YouTubers and their whatevers. Their um, drama. Yeah, but I've been watching stuff. Yeah. I have been watching stuff. Uh, I did watch the new JonTron. Speaking oh, of, yeah. Speaking, speaking of, of YouTubers. prolific YouTubers, I did watch John the new Tron JonTron video. Um, it was about buying stupid shit online. And nobody's ever done that. Ever. I gotta say, uh, that's a really old concept. I know I've told you how much I, I'm like whatever on Jontron. Right. I thought it was okay. I thought it was kind of. It funny. was funny. There was there, there was just too many parts where like, like that whole gnome in the art gallery thing to me was just like just end this dude like like it's the just... gnome in the art gallery thing was so weird yeah. <laughs> because I feel like I feel like sometimes when John thinks that things are funny, uh huh, they're funny because he gets to do something fun. To him, right? Because mm-hmm. like, a lot of the times his cutaway jokes, mm-hmm. I feel like, oh, he just wanted to see if he could do this. Yeah. And it's like a two second joke, but doesn't really land. Yeah, I don't know. Like when I see stuff like that, that's that's when I kind of vomit in my mouth because I'm like, this is like, are you fucking Jimmy Fallon? Are you like, <laughs> are you like Ellen DeGeneres? Like you're like fucking pranking people or like tricking people and walking into some store that you own or like I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'll say I'll say this. I, I used to watch this same concept on College Humor. Uh huh. They were like, we ordered stupid shit off Amazon. Okay. And here's our reviews, and it was funny. I, I enjoy this concept. That part of the video I liked, yeah. The the <laughs> concept is really really great. Um, they did they even did the boyfriend pillow. Oh yeah. They did that on College Humor. Oh okay. And they did that on H three H three even. Oh okay. So I. I it's a good concept. It works, especially with him, because he, he's funny. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, I, I enjoyed it, but I was like, really? I Go think... back to, like, five years ago? I don't know. Like, I actually heard the uh, the podcast, the H3 podcast that he was on as well, mm-hmm. and I was telling my friend, like, I feel like John Tron's, like, a lot more charismatic just being himself than he is, like, in his videos sometimes. You know? I completely agree with that. Like, because I was just, like, listening to him talk on that podcast, and I was like... 
He's a funny guy. Like, he sounds like a funny dude to just hang out with, but, like... He is. I don't know, like, his, he's so different in his videos, it's just really... I, don't I think know. it's because, like, okay, did you see the Flex Seal 2 video? No, I've only seen the latest That's one. what I'm saying, it's like, it's like, when he's doing that, mm -hmm. he's not as funny as when, like, when he's doing something like this, or when he did... I like the, the drug, PS drug PSA thing. I saw that one, yeah, because you put it on one time, and I was actually like, oh... That was kind of funny. Because but, she's just riffing and, yeah. and interacting it, with the scene. <laughs> yeah, he's just a little more like, I don't know, normal as opposed to like this whole like, let me dress up for this joke <laughs> kind of thing. You know, I don't Which know. Which he did in that one a couple times. But honestly, it felt better. It felt like... He sang a whole song at the end. For what? For the new one? Oh, for the new one? Yeah, that yeah. was dumb. Yeah. That was so <laughs> dumb. I almost, I almost, honestly, I almost turned it off. <laughs> I, I almost turned you off. That, that's the kind of shit I'm talking about. I'm just like, yeah, I get it, dude. But like, you don't have to do the whole song, or like, I don't know, whatever. Well, listen, people like, people like to hear him sing. Okay, fair enough. No, I, I, I get it. Like, he's, he's got a big audience. He does whatever the fuck he wants. He's, yeah. he's a successful man. No, no ill will towards Mister Tron. Um, but but it, I'm telling you, like, he did. Okay, so before this one. Mm -hmm. He did a safety at work videos. Okay, I did. Those, that was funny too. I saw the thumbnail for it, but I didn't watch it. Well, it's it's exactly like the workout videos. And All right, the, and I'll check it out. I'll check it out, Ernie. I just want to get on to these other things I got to talk about real fast. Okay, I saw the movie everyone's been talking about. Okay, I saw the one everyone's been clamoring for. Do you know what it is? You're setting this up <laughs> in a way that I'm like he's not talking about the one I think he's talking no, about. Yeah, I'm talking about Detective. Yeah, that's what I you were gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Detective Ponkers. I thought you were gonna say like John Wick Three or No, no, like, or Aladdin or something. I was, like, I was, no, I was gonna watch. Al you. Yeah, I was gonna watch Aladdin, but the plans fell through, so I haven't watched it yet. Um, but I saw Detective Pikachu. I know what do you think? I know it's a bit old news at this point. Everyone's moved on. Uh, but I thought it was fine. Uh, I tried. I tried my best not to be like biased because you know how much i think pokemon is just stupid right if you're a fan of the podcast you know that i'm not very thrilled <laughs> like, and, and steve is not even the hugest fan of ryan reynolds right exactly so put them together and oh boy right but <laughs> but i was actually like oh boy <laughs> i was actually like whatever it's fucking like if you if you like pokemon in any way Mm -hmm. I think you'll enjoy the movie because they 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 totally pander to that kind of like person. Mm -hmm. they have little references to Pokemon crap. There's a part where Pikachu sings the anime intro mm -hmm. to Pokemon, uh, and I wanted to walk out of the theater, but I didn't because okay. um, it wasn't funny. It really wasn't, and I don't know if this is just the theaters that I go to. But, but no one I'm ever. I guess it is. No one ever reacts to the movie at all. <laughs> no one ever like. Well, when did you go see it? I went to see like opening weekend actually. And oh okay. It, yeah, I, I was gonna it, say. I, I was gonna say if it wasn't opening weekend, I was like, I get it because you know. It might have been a few days after. It might have been a weird day. It couldn't uh, have been that much of a. No, no, no. Day. You know what? It was like a Sunday in the morning, right? Because. Oh. Um, yeah. Okay. Never mind. But people were there, dude. Like, people showed up for this fucking... Like, kids? Yeah. Or, like, old no, no. people who were like, I need a place to be. There was def yeah, there was definitely kids there. Like, this fucking lady walked in with three of her kids right when we sat down. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't know. It was it was okay. I will say that, like, as far as, like, video game movies go, mm -hmm. it's probably the best one, right? Cause, what, did, like, what did you think about all the Pokemon? Like, uh, the way that they built him into the world. There was, like, cool moments. Like, when he first gets to uh, fucking Zootopia or whatever, mm -hmm. he looks around and there's all these fucking Pokemon everywhere and it's, like, cool. But after that, they kind of just, like, reuse Pokemon that are on screen so it's not as cool. Like How many do you think you saw? I don't fucking know. Like How many different 25, types of Pokemon? 25 Pokemon. 25. Yeah. Uh, like... They did a they did a pretty good job of kind of like incorporating them into the world, mm -hmm. like the po the the police officers use our canines and they use Growlithe. Oh, neat! Yeah, yeah okay. and and that was kind of that. I was I, like, oh, like Jenny, right? Yeah, like yeah. I I would, <laughs> I will admit at that point I was just like, oh, this is adorable. I love Growlithe <laughs> working with police <laughs> officers, but like I don't know. For the rest of the movie, there wasn't as much of that. Basically, they like 
There's That's a, disappointing. There's a part where they like drive out to the like this fucking like field to visit like a Pokemon lab, and there's not a another Pokemon besides Pikachu within like a mile, and it's like no Tauruses. What? No Tauros in there the fields is. or anything. Okay. Any Tauros? You want me to get down to the nitty grit of this movie? Like the, that's what this podcast is. The so yes, CG dude. was kind of shitty. Like the, the, there's a okay. The the moment the the movie begins, right? I'll hurry it up because Ernie's yawning over here. He's so tired of the shit. No, right. no, no, no. Don't worry about that, Jess. Um, the the Tauros and like the Pidgey are in like the are in daylight and it looks really bad. But as soon as the movie goes into like the L.A. noirish, like neon lighty vapor wave, so basically shadows. Yeah, it looks way better. I thought so, and I was like. Make the whole fucking movie in in the dark. Like why do I like I don't need scenes where Pikachu's out in the fucking daytime. Like well, I mean it's I I didn't even think you'd be out in the field honestly because it's called Detective Pikachu. I figured the whole thing was going to take place in one night. Yeah, you would you would think like there'd be a lot more detective work, but there's not. And also, right when the movie starts, there's like some cringy ass like acting going on between the, these two guys. Mm-hmm. It's like the main kid and like his friend, and his friend is just like. Bro, you need to open up more. I got you this cue bone, and you gotta open up more, and your feelings, and all this crap. And immediately in my head, I was like, "This is a child's movie." Oh, I walked into a kid's movie. You know, like it's and and I, I, I know it sounds weird to say that. It sounds obvious, right? Because it's a Pokemon right. movie. But like, you go watch a Pixar movie, and you're like, "I feel for these characters." Like, this is a real fucking movie. Like, this is really for general audiences. Yeah. Like, anybody can. The fact that it's animated has nothing to do with there the is, Yeah, there's like levels of appreciation here. Yeah. I literally walked into Detective Pikachu and I was like, this is this a fucking Disney Channel? Like, this acting is crap. Like, these characters are fucking cringy. Like, <laughs> so you say Disney Channel. Because it is. One of the girls literally was like a... Reminded me of like a Disney... I was like, it's like Ari Carly like or she something? She walked in and like fell immediately into the floor. She's like, oh, oh. No, it just, it, you know how, like, on Disney Channel shows, it seems like the kids are somehow, like, wiser than adults? Yes. Like, like the adults are, like, fucking stupid somehow? The adults that's are kind missing of, brain cells, and that's, the kids are just like, oh, yeah. I guess I'm way smarter than the adults. I don't know. It just, it, it, it had that kind of vibe to it. So just, if you're going to watch it, just prepare for that kind of stuff, because it wasn't, fuck, kicked over my body. <laughs> <laughs> He's that pissed, guys. Um... But no, I, I thought it was all right. It had a lot of it had a lot of gimmicky, like cool eye candy shit. There's a, there's a scene with Gyarados, which I was like, oh, oh that's that cool. cool, yeah. Like yeah, nice. That was that was cool. Um, honestly, like, it, there's a lot of movies that come out in Japan only, right? Mm-hmm. This almost felt like one of those movies that only comes out in Japan. Like I'm surprised it even came out in America. Like, well, you know, I will say that um, based on an article I read this week, that's probably the case because. In Japan, is now you can now officially get married by Pikachu. Oh, really? What it's the like fuck? Pikachu weddings. Oh, wow. Officially uh, ordained and what is it called? Like sanctioned under Nintendo. That is fucking stupid. And it, there's Pikachu girl, Pikachu guy dressed up in a little suit and a little wedding dress. Hmm. Get a life. Well, anyway. <laughs> um, I was just, I was just gonna say because like they have like Full Metal Alchemist like the movie in Japan and That's it's right. like with like a lot of CG and stuff. But it's like... But they, they don't mind that. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I'm watching this movie and I'm just like, look, it, it looks like shit. It's really cheesy. But do I want less of these movies? No. I like this. Like, it seems pretty cool. Like, if they were going to make, like, another, I don't know, like, another video game movie and have it be, like, this amount of CG and this amount of tacky corniness, like, I probably wouldn't mind it. I'd probably watch it, you know? Like, so... Seems like it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, what about you? Are you watch anything? Uh, not, uh, I didn't, I only got to watch, like, uh, cause John Wick 3 was coming out. Yeah, you wanna so watch that, like, I know you do. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, oh, sh- I'm gonna get to watch this weekend. Didn't, those plans fell through, so you're not the only one whose plans fell through. But I got <laughs> to watch one and two, like, back to back, because, I don't know if you've heard of this, but there's a new channel called Paramount Channel. Okay. I had never heard of it. <laughs> But apparently, like, I, we were, when we went on our vacation, the wife and I got stuck in the hotel for a day because it started raining like crazy. Okay. So it was just like, they were like, it's all day John Wick. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, look, baby, they're John Wick one. She's like, oh, go ahead and watch it, blah, blah, blah. I was like, cool, I'll watch part one. And then they're like, and up next, John Wick two. I was like, oh, great, I was going to watch nice. it when I get home. 
And then immediately after, they're like, and then back to John Wick 1. <laughs> yeah. So, so the whole day was just back to John, John Wick, Wick channel. Yeah. Um, I got to say, like, the first one was very... Um, You've seen the first one, though. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I had seen the first one. And I think we already went through it here on the podcast, so I won't reiterate too much of it. But the, the first one is very much a revenge plot. Yeah. The second one takes that and, like, amps it up to 20. Like, okay. 20 times the original thing. So whatever you thought happened in the first one... Happens a million times more in the second one. That's what you want from a sequel. Yeah, and it's right. like, oh no, John Wick is against a certain a little mob here in the city. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, John Wick's against the fucking the world, baby. Almost the world, because like he comes back and it's, and then somebody's like, I want John Wick's head on a platter, and he's like in New York and he's just walking, and they're like, whoever brings him, all the assassins in New York, whoever can kill him. Seven million dollars, and so he's just walking through New York, fucking stabbing people and cutting their number. throats. And it's like, well, I don't know if it was that much, but he's just like, I just, I want his head and platter. Give me the John Wick, and it's so great because they have a lot of like, if you if you're a big fan of like Bruce Lee, if you're a big fan of all these big time action heroes of like the eighties, nineties, all this stuff. There's a lot of little segments in it that you're like, this looks like it was very much inspired by that. Like, oh, okay, as That's the cool. biggest example that stood out to me was like, um, and I think I already told you this part, but like, in Enter the Dragon, there's a really great scene where the bad guy, like, decides to hide in this maze of mirrors Mm -hmm. so that Bruce Lee can't find him. So he starts punching the mirrors and stuff. And it's a really great scene. Uh, It's a really good action scene, lots of suspense. So in this one, when he's hunting down these people, Mm -hmm. he goes into the Museum of Soul Mm-hmm. And he and it's just like like a, an interactive uh, maze of glass and light, and so essentially he's doing that. So there's a lot of scenes where like you see the glass, you're looking into the glass, and you think it's John Wick, but he's pointing here, but he's actually pointing over there. Lots of people shooting John Wick because they think he's there, but it's actually a mirror involved. Oh, okay. So it's like cool. lots of mirrors involved. It's a great scene. Yeah, it's a fucking fantastic scene. So I've heard a lot of good things, and I, I've been meaning to watch them. I just don't. Uh... I just don't care enough to actually see. like if things are not Netflix I won't watch them <laughs> like the, the only reason I I actually when I was gonna watch John Wick mm-hmm. I looked on my iTunes because mm-hmm. they have sales on there all the time yeah it was like five bucks and I was like I could rent this for five bucks I'm totally buying this mm-hmm. so I just bought it um, the way that part two ends mm-hmm. is essentially being like uh, is essentially leading into part three. Oh, that's so it's cool. like it's exactly they knew that. what they were doing. Yeah. They knew exactly what they were doing. Like here you go, part three. Right. Although part three, I, I don't know what that like. Um, I don't know much about it, but the fact that the way that part two ends, mm-hmm. it's gonna be insane because essentially part at the end of part two, it's just like John Wick, you're fucked. Oh okay. But I'm gonna give you a head start, and they're just like, oh shit. Really? And so the, the that much like yeah wow okay and so at the end of the movie's just like fuck it takes off running yeah I thought you, like I thought when you said like it kind of leads into the next one I thought you meant it was more like no it's lit- I think they, like I haven't seen the movie but I I wouldn't be surprised if the first scene of the next movie is just literally him running whoa you know that's crazy yeah that's pretty intense yeah I like it I, I might check it out I like Keanu Reeves and he's really great in this movie. Um, but not because of his stellar acting or anything, because really he doesn't do a lot of talking. Mm-hmm. Um, the story is just very simple, and it's very to the point. But there's like I, I, I akin this to like a good like a good meal, right? You can go and have a hamburger anywhere, mm-hmm. and it's real simple. If you want just a plain old cheeseburger, just meat, cheese, and fixings, that's it. Okay. But if you want a but there's something to be said about a place that does it really well. Yeah. And you're just like, this is a good ass burger. So right. it's like, it's an action movie. It's it's as plain as an action movie can be. Very simple story. But it's done really fucking well. Okay. You know. Does the part, two, part two is like, I didn't, I, I didn't think they could top the first one and they did it. And now people are saying the same thing about three. They're like, three top two. Which is insane. Really? Yeah, because wow. what I said is like, He's in New York, he's just walking around and like, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Definitely. I'll have to check that out. I think I think you'll be impressed. The choreography's great. Okay. Oh, then part three has like Halle Berry and some other people in it. 
Yeah. That's not going to sway me. I don't care about that. Oh, but part two also it reunites uh, Neo and Morpheus. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's Fishburne's in it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's cool. <laughs> Do they make a joke about that or not? No. no? Um, I'm sure there's fan theories about like, oh, it's yeah, actually, yeah, it's actually the Matrix. And just watch it because I think, I think, I think you'll <laughs> understand. Uh, I think you'll love that scene. Okay, yeah. cool. Actually, you're making it sound a lot like Katana Zero. <laughs> like, like I'm telling, like the first one, you'll get the first ten minutes of the first one is very slow, but once it gets going, it's going, and then you're like, oh shit, let's go, let's go, let's go, cool. and you get it's it's very good. The first one's very good at world building. All right. And then second one, you just get. Now that you know how the world kind of works, mm-hmm. then he gets into more of like deeper into it. You know what it's I mean? It's like uh, it's like when Marvel movies have like a sequel, like the second, exactly the second one when they know how to use their power. This is like the Winter Soldier. So but just... but okay, so imagine, imagine Tony Stark, right? Mm-hmm. But imagine that he retired. Okay. And then like he goes back and he opens up all the old suits and blah blah blah. It, that's kind of the feel of this. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not sure if that really helps, but okay, sure. Well, like. Okay, so remember, imagine like Winter Soldier put away his arm and he was just living a regular life. And yeah. then somebody's like, we need you back. And he's like, fine, I'll put my arm back on, but I okay. don't like it. You know what I mean? And then he... But I don't like it. I don't yeah. like it. Yeah, all right, sure. It doesn't fit anymore. I'm gaining some weight. <laughs> it's great, man. Okay. Uh, you're you're going to like the world that he lives in. I'll check it out. I did, I did like the posters for John Wick 3. They're all like neon-y and like psychedelic and whatnot, so... And they're already shooting part four. They're already going to start what? part four. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that pokes a hole in the theory that I had about the end of John. Wick that he's going to die. I thought. Uh, I figured like, why wouldn't he? Well, like, the part that I mean, I don't know if part four is a prequel. Oh, I guess so. I don't know. All right, whatever. Then Could be cool. I mean, I assume like that's my theory too that he's going to die at the end. I, yeah, like I don't know. It just seemed like but I appropriate. Mean, I mean, I thought he was going to die in part two, honestly. How are they gonna make a part? F- whatever, whatever. Yeah. I would have said like three movies. By the that's way, fucking great. He's doing all this action shit. Uh huh. Guy's fifty four. <laughs> he's like almost sixty, and he's still doing these movies. He's one of these actors that just looks like somehow younger than he did. <laughs> and I think next year, he's uh-huh. doing Bill and Ted. That's real. That's real. Why are they doing that? Why not? I don't know. <laughs> they remake every every fucking thing else. And by the way, Keanu Reeves has been in a ton of movies that you're like, why is he in this? Like, he's in that Asian movie, uh, Always Be My Maybe. He's in that. <laughs> he's a, Yeah, he's in that movie, and he's literally, like, walked right off the set of John Wick, because he looks exactly... He looks exactly... I know. I literally think that he was shooting the movie, and they're just like... He, he was like, I can't shave. Like, I'm doing the other movie. I can't shave for this, you know? Yes. You are not... You're not... Is that part of the story in in that movie? No, he's he he plays himself. He plays Keanu Reeves. Oh, okay, I see. So it's like he's he's himself, um, but there's just like he okay. So he's in Always Be My Baby, right? Uh-huh. He was in a movie called Destination Wedding. It's fucking terrible. Okay. He's in a movie called SPF eighteen, which which stars all these like all these little kids, and they're. The reason he's even involved in that one is because the main kid is yeah. house sitting for Keanu Reeves. So he plays himself again. Again, but he comes in at the very end of the movie. That's like, weird. Oh, I remember this place being nicer. Oh. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I guess. I've heard he's had like the most depressing life. Like people around him keep dying and all this shit. Like, you really want to go into that? No, no I he's don't. Had we're, a really we're, we're, we're done. But here. here's, here's the cool thing about it, right? Not he he has like an apartment in 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 Manhattan. Uh huh. He has a dog. He lives a very simple life. Like he's not like he takes the train and shit. Yeah, I know. I heard he doesn't spend a lot of money and no. like he's a because very... a lot of his money he just gives away to charities. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Like there's videos of people who just take watching Keanu Reeves. Like they're like, oh, I'm on a subway with Keanu Reeves, and he's just like. There's he's... one where he's just like he's stand he's like he's standing somewhere. Some lady's like walking past. He's like, do you want to hold on to the <laughs> and he kind of moves out. He of offers her a ball. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> he's just some regular guy. <laughs> Literally the most normal person. You yeah, know. yeah. That's hilarious. Well, 
I think that does it for this one. Uh, we're way over time here. Of course right. we are. Yeah. We, had, we were coming back, man. This was the, this was, yeah, this was the comeback special. <laughs> is where we inform everybody about where we've been. Um, but yeah, we are the Radio Tunes Podcast on SoundCloud. We are also a Radio Tunes Podcast on iTunes. That's right. I am at Soho Shuffle on Twitter. And I'm at Neo Ernie on Twitter. And... Uh, you can probably pretty much, if you type that in, you'll probably find me on every social media platform. There you go, yeah. <laughs> so tweet at us. Tweet at us, whatever you like. Actually, yeah. no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> tweet Steven exactly what you yeah. want as a cartoon. Yeah. I'm sure he'll love that. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I don't mind. You tweet me whatever you want. I don't give a fuck. Um, but yeah. The words he lived to regret. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that. Uh, all righty. That does it for this week, guys. See you next week. See you next week, guys.